when a free agent signing becomes a bust, there's plenty of blame to go around. The player for underperforming, and of course, the team for overpaying. So here now, Sports Illustrated's list of the five worst NFL free agent signings. When a player is given his outright release from a team, it's usually not a sign that a big contract is in the pipeline. But when it's Drew Rosenhaus negotiating with the Raiders, well, anything is possible. That explains how Javon Walker was able to sign a six-year, $55 million contract after being released from the Broncos. But he still walked away with an estimated $20 million in salary, courtesy of Al Davis. It's a special player who can be considered one of the best and one of the worst free agent signings of all time. Deion Sanders is one of those special people. Once the free agent savior for the 49ers and the Cowboys, by the time Mr. Sanders went to Washington, well, all the magic was gone. One of Daniel Snyder's first of many splashy signings, a 33-year-old Dion played in one season and had four interceptions for the Redskins as the neon lights were flickering. Third on our list is the only quarterback to make an appearance in the top five, Neil O'Donnell. While you can't blame O'Donnell for the Jets' 1-15 mark his first season in New York, after all, he was injured and played only six games. But when Bill Parcells was hired to clean up the Jets' mess, O'Donnell turned into one of the casualties. Benched for poor play by the Big Tuna, it wasn't long before O'Donnell was packing his bags yet again, just two years after leading the Steelers to Super Bowl XXX. Speaking of Super Bowl XXX, Larry Brown was the MVP of that game. And that's about where the highlights end. Brown signed a five-year, $12 million deal with the Raiders after the Super Bowl and started exactly one game as a member of the Silver and Black. He appeared in just 12 games overall and was released two years into his contract and just three years removed from the Super Bowl performance that made him a star. Brown was out of the league entirely. Technically, Albert Hainsworth isn't on this list for how he performed on the field. We barely saw him there. After getting $41 million in guaranteed money from the Redskins in 2009, Hainsworth refused to attend off-season workouts, and when he did show up, the defensive tackle was so out of shape, he couldn't pass the team's mandatory fitness test in training camp. Complaints about the team's defensive scheme put Hainsworth even deeper into Mike Shanahan's doghouse, and he was off the team completely after just two seasons. Because of the bad money, the bad play, and the bad attitude, Albert Hainsworth tops Sports Illustrated's list of the worst NFL free agent signing in history.